Okay, we're ready to talk about some cost notions that will help us do the analytics. Um, I want to distinguish between several ideas, and I think that'll help us tie together what's a modern approach to thinking about these economic questions with the approach that is a direct derivative of Adam Smith's work. So let's begin with the idea of a fixed cost. Literally, a fixed cost is a cost that does not vary with output. Um, there are a couple of stories to explain why there are fixed costs, and I will give two of them, but I want to first introduce a second notion, which is the notion of a sunk cost. A sunk cost is a cost that once, once it's incurred, it can't be undone, so it's a non-recoverable cost. So on the one hand, we have fixed costs that don't vary with output, and the other hand, we have sunk costs that are non-recoverable, and actually, in a lot of what we're going to model, the cost is both fixed and sunk. So let's start with the um, factory story. This is the Adam Smith type of story for why there are fixed and sunk costs. And basically the idea is when you have a factory, if you actually consider the factory itself as a piece of capital, it takes time to vary the capital, either to add an additional plant or to increase the size of the current plant um, or to downsize or get rid of the plant. That, those things take time, and in the near term, we call it the short run. In the short run, you simply can't do that. So um, there's a bit of a different story about upward adjustments in physical plant versus downward adjustment. Let's do the upward adjustment part. Basically, the way you get more physical plant is by building it additional plant, and so you have to just think about all the issues involved in new construction, um, the time it takes to actually get an additional building online. Um, you want, want to think about um, factories or plants in this story as being specific assets, meaning they're capital that's tailored to the production of that particular firm. and. Um, therefore, you can't simply acquire another factory that maybe is not being used. You might be able to actually acquire, acquire the shell, but you still will have to retail or what's inside that. So the upward adjustment takes time. Short run is, is the time period until that upward adjustment is possible. The downward adjustment is where the sunk costs come in. If there's an actually good um, resale market for the factory, you can exit by just selling it off to some other buyer of the factory, and then you get out, and so exit can be instantaneous, and then there is no sunk cost. But because of the asset specificity, that is, the factory is tailored to a, a particular use, if you're going to resell, you probably won't get back the value that you originally put into it, and the difference between what you can get back and what you originally put into it is the sunk cost. If that's substantial, um, you either hold on to the factory until it fully depreciates or you take it in the shorts, you get out quickly, but then you pay a big um, implicit price by getting much less back than you actually paid for it. So um, the short run is the time period where you can't recover the full cost. So for downward adjustments, what you want to think about the long run then is a planning horizon where those um, costs have not yet been sunk. They haven't actually been incurred yet. I want to do one other idea because we've talked about capital here. Um, and then I'll go back to the other explanation for why there are fixed costs. This other idea is that capital we think of as an input without time units. So we think of a plant as just a plant. Labor, on the other hand, we think of as a flow. So um, when you hire workers, you hire them per week, or you pay them per hour, or if they're on salary, per year. And you count. Um, employees based on a time period, in order to make capital costs comparable with labor costs, you somehow have to convert purchase price of the capital to 
a implicit rental price. In some cases, there's an active rental market. You can just use the market price. But in some cases, you actually have to do a conversion. And um, it might be helpful to think about buying your own home in thinking about what the components are in doing that conversion. So there really are three types of components in trying to come up with an implicit rental price. First run are the interest charges either explicit because you've got a mortgage or you've taken out a loan and you have to actually pay those interest charges or you're self-financed in which case there's implicit interest charges. Second one is maintenance and depreciation. Um, those are um, charges that you have to account for. And then there is the the resale market and the price in the resale market can go up or down so there are capital gains or losses there <coughs> and the capital gains or losses are another component of the rental price so in order to actually um, compare capital costs with labor costs you have to actually convert purchase to rental um, and so now you're measuring the cost in the, in the same time interval for both and doing the appropriate um, type of calculations. Okay, let's switch gears now and talk about this other explanation for fixed costs. This other explanation is a more current one. It existed in Adam Smith's time too, but it's more prominent in a lot of the industries that are interesting to think about economically, and that's the notion of an indivisible input. Indivisible inputs mean you require them at a certain level, irrespective of how much output you produce. Um, it's a common joke that in um, pharmaceuticals, the incremental cost of the second pill may be 10 cents, but the incremental cost of that first pill is $100 million because you have to do all the clinical tests, all the R&D, and the science to actually develop the drug. And so the, all that stuff is our indivisible inputs, regardless of how many pills you actually produce. If you think about electricity consumption, the wires, the transmission is an indivisible input. Likewise, with railroads, the tracks are an indivisible input. And in software authoring, textbook authoring, actually any type of authoring, the writing is an indivisible input. Indivisible inputs are another explanation for fixed costs. You can have them either in the planning phase, in which case they're fixed but not sunk, or you know the cost could have already been incurred and then that becomes a sunk cost as well. So we have two different explanations um, for fixed costs, the factory style one and the indivisible input style one. You want to have both of those in mind as we actually work through the theory. Now we'll move on to the actual modeling.